All right, howdy folks, a much anticipated and long awaited update for Enlisted is finally here. We're talking a whole Pacific campaign. Now, as always, you can find a link to the game I'm talking about down below in the video description. Now today, I wanna to take a look at their announcement and quickly talk about what we can expect from this update. So obviously, first of all, they are confirming the Japanese army or IGA as a new faction who will be fighting the US Marines in this new campaign. And we have some very interesting, very specific Japanese equipment to be added to the game, which we'll take a look at later on in the video. Now, unlike the Stalingrad campaign, which was their last release, which actually saw quite a few complaints from players, this campaign will be accessible to everyone for free. However, there will be a premium pack, including four premium squads with two for the US and two for the Japanese, as well as including some other bonuses and content. However, from what I'm reading here, there will not be an experience bonus like there was during the Stalingrad campaign, or maybe worse, there will not be any blocking off of certain units or equipment like they did with the Stalingrad campaign, which I think caused a lot of backlash. So I'm happy to see that the developers are going back to the old system where you can just play to unlock everything and nothing should be locked behind a paywall if you're a free to play player. However, before we continue with the rest of the video, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Modern Warships. Modern Warships is a free to play multiplayer game focused on realistic naval battles where you'll become the captain of your own ship with 30 plus ships to choose from and over 200 different weapon types to launch towards your opponents. Now, besides regular ships, you can command aircraft carriers, submarines, and helicopters from different nations, each with a different flavor of gameplay. And with these ships, you'll fight in 5v5 battles with and against other real players. It's simple and intuitive to upgrade your ships, and within a few weeks of playing, you can turn your favorite ship into a real squirt of the seas. Also, pay to win does not exist in the game, so get to playing those ships, Captain. If you want your ship to stand out from the crowd, you can pick one of the many styles added to the game. For example, this destroyer's dragon skin or the fancy orange camo on this frigate. You might have noticed it for some of the gameplay footage already, but the game looks stunning with realistic graphics and effects, as well as unique locations and weather conditions helping you feel immersed in battle. So, what are you waiting for? Download Modern Warships today via the link in the description and use my code to get a three-day premium account helping you boost your progress in the game. A huge shout out to Modern Warships for sponsoring this segment. Let's get on with the video. Now, both the Japanese and Marines get a premium assault squad. The Japanese get the Giretsu Paratrooper Squad, which will be armed with the very rare Type 1 SMG, which has a 50 round magazine. The Marines get the second Marine Raiders, which will be armed with the famous M1928 Tommy gun, which of course many people will be familiar with. And both of these squads will also include an engineer to build fortifications in battle. Now, besides these infantry squads, both factions will also get an amphibious tank. And I have to say, I particularly really like the look of the Japanese KG-1. As a crew of seven, and it says you can actually dismount the vehicle and basically get a tank assault squad, we'll have to see what they are armed and equipped with. The Americans get the LVT armed with the 37 millimeter gun, which is smaller than the K-Cheese gun, but the power to weight ratio on the LVT is a lot better, so it'll make it a lot more mobile on the battlefield. It also appears that pre-ordering this pack will give access to some smaller stuff, like an in-game portrait, a samurai mask to put on your vehicles, as well as a camouflage scheme for both the amphibious vehicles in this upcoming update. Now, whether that's worth it to you is obviously yours to decide. Now, initially the campaign will launch with 26 unlockable levels for both factions with some new equipment and weapons listed down below. The Japanese will get the more commonly seen Type 100 SMG as a regular unlock as opposed to the very rare type one that we talked about in the premium pack and the americans will get their hands on the australian vertical mag owen gun smg it's a bit of a weird weapon to give to the u.s faction and i understand they cannot just make a whole australian faction out of nowhere but it could have been cool to see this smg in some sort of an australian or soldier squad though in the end i suppose it's nice that this is a free unlockable instead of locked behind a premium squad paywall. The Japanese will have access to the Type 11 LMG, which saw combat use in the earlier days of the Pacific War, 
and it will most likely be the first MG to be unlocked for the Japanese with at least the Type 96 and Type 99 Nambu machine guns also being unlocked probably later on in the tech tree. The Americans will get the M1941 Johnson LMG. It's specifically mentioned here. It not only has two firing modes, but also two different firing rates. So I assume that means you can go either full auto or semi-automatic and then on a full auto stance, much like the BAR, you can probably switch between a fast full auto or a slower full auto for more control of the recoil. Now, two new vehicles to expect will be the Japanese A6 M20, which will probably be one of many A6Ms we'll see added to the game over time. And the American M13 MGMC, armed with two .50 caliber machine guns, shoot at aircraft, light vehicles, and of course, be very deadly against enemy infantry. Now, something that seems a little bit Rising Storm 1-ish is the talk about melee charging and the bonuses you will receive while doing it. Obviously, the Pacific being very famous for the Japanese Banzai charges, this could be an interesting addition. And from what I gather, it seems that melee charging with the bayonet or even a sword will give your character an increase in speed to try to help you close the distance with enemy soldiers. Rising Storm had something similar, where Japanese soldiers charging would cause a suppression effect on US soldiers if done in sufficient numbers, which is something that I really thought was a very clever design choice, and maybe we'll see something similar down the line to maybe buff melee in and list it a little bit more. Now, a unique piece of equipment that the Japanese used during the war in the Pacific is the lunge mine. And this is one of the things that I wanted to talk about because they showed it and I was like, no, they're actually adding this. It's basically a huge explosive at the end of a long stick. The idea is that you hit an enemy vehicle with it, but you can allegedly survive the explosion while dealing heavy damage to enemy vehicles if you manage to time your charge correctly. Though I'm not really sure, but I kind of want to figure out how good these would do against a group of infantry inside of a building, just to find out for scientific reasons. They're also adding new white phosphorus grenades, which will allow for quick on-demand smoke, but also allow for area denial, as the flames and the fumes that'll last will actually damage infantry over time, either forcing soldiers to switch cover or to deny entry to an area for a small time, like a doorway. There's a few pictures of upcoming maps and they do look really good. There's one thing I have to say about Enlisted, it's a really good looking game in my opinion. And with them saying we can expect to see stuff like Guadalcanal, as well as Gavutu Island, which housed a large Japanese base at the time. A lot of amphibious warfare seems possible, which does make me hope for some sort of unlockable amphibious vehicles, which will be in the game, and, and not just those two premium squads that they talked about earlier, because otherwise it would be a little bit weird to only have the amphibious vehicles be paid. Now personally, I've really wanted to see a Pacific campaign in Enlisted for a very long time, and it just seems to me like Enlisted mixes the best parts of Red Orchestra 2, which is the sort of realistic damage model, and the best parts of Battlefield, which is combined warfare between tanks, infantry, and even aircraft, as well as more of the flow of Battlefield, where it's a little bit more rushy and a little bit more action-y than RO2, because a lot of RO2 can be sitting in the back of the map, shooting people 100 or 150 meters away. I'm personally just a huge fan of Enlisted, and I definitely am super excited to check out this Pacific campaign. So you can definitely expect some videos on it whenever it releases. And I definitely hope to see some of you there in battle. Now, are you excited about this new campaign? What theater would you like to see next? Or do you think they should just build upon one of the existing campaigns or this new Pacific one? Let me know in the comments. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it and hope to catch you in the next one.